Power Hit Parade, starring Frank Sinatra. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? And now, smile a while with Lorenzo Jones and his wife, Belle. Manhattan merry-go-round that brings you the bright side of life, that whirls you in music to all the big night spots of New York town, to hear the top songs of the week sung so clearly you can understand every word and sing them yourself. This is the golden age of radio. I'm Dick Bertell, and tonight we'll take you on another audio excursion back to radio's formative years. You'll hear the programs that made the era golden, and meet people who made those broadcasts a reality. Now your host, Dick Bertell. Good evening, and with me once again is radio collector historian Ed Corcoran. How are you tonight, Ed? Oh, pretty good, Dick, and tonight it's a little bit special. This is Girls' Night on our show. That it is. And our guest is a very special girl, or woman, I should say. Ed, through the magic of radio, I'm going to take you and our listeners to the 46th Street Theater in New York tonight, where the curtain is just about to go up on a new smash hit. Are you ready? Okay, let's let her go. You're listening to the overture of one of the most exciting musicals ever to light up Broadway. Not once, but twice. The first time was in 1925, and now it's back again, bigger and brighter than ever. Featured in this exciting revival is one of the great movie stars of the 1930s, Ruby Keeler, and we're about to meet her. I understand, Ed, that she's one of your favorites. Yeah, I think I can hardly wait. Good. Ruby Keeler visited with us in Hartford a number of years ago, and I had the pleasure of interviewing her. While not primarily a radio star, she did a lot of radio nonetheless, and she was there at the very beginning of sound motion pictures. Well, that is a first, Dick. Yes, it is. Let's bring Ruby Keeler back tonight, Ed. I know you've brought several examples of her work on radio with you that we can hear tonight, so let's meet this charming and very talented icon of the 1930s Hollywood musicals. Well, thank you very much. You're very nice to say all these nice things about me. Miss Keeler, are you from the East to begin with? Are you familiar with this area? Uh, a little. Mm-hmm. I was uh, born in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and raised in New York, you see. So mm-hmm. I, uh, I, I know the area pretty well. I know, uh, um, well, New York very well. I thought I knew New York <laughs> until I arrived the other night, and uh, I haven't uh, been east for, oh, I guess about eight or ten years, and I thought it would be the same. You know, you could always walk the streets in New York, walk any of the avenues and whatnot, and I heard at dinner, don't you dare walk alone. I mean, you could go out at any hour, mm-hmm. walk Fifth Avenue or uh, Park Avenue or even go over to my old neighborhood, which was the east side of New York, in uh, Yorkville, and mm-hmm. I've always wanted to, whenever I'm in New York, I always like to just go back and go over and go to uh, St. Catharines, uh, where I went to school, and, and uh, but I didn't have an opportunity to do that. And I still don't think that I would have any qualms or fear of going over and walking the streets, uh, you know, I mean, they, everybody says, oh, they're going to, they'll hit you on the head and all this thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't think there, there are too many who do this sort of thing. How do you like California, and how long have you lived out there now? Oh, heavens. I've <laughs> lived in California for, uh, let me see now, 30 years, 30, yeah, about 30 years, mm-hmm. huh? Mm-hmm. Or more, I don't know, maybe it's 80. It's, <laughs> it's a long, long time. <laughs> do you uh, eventually break the ties with New York, or do you still feel uh, affiliated with it? Oh, I feel close to New York, mm. even though I, I'm not here. Uh, I, I just 
feel that uh, New York is uh, me, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, or that I'm part of New York. The mm -hmm. children and my husband all think I'm absolutely out of my mind. But I, I like the East. Well, I, I can understand that, and especially mm -hmm. New York. New York yeah. has a charm and oh, a soul. Oh, it was such a thrill, really. Yeah. Um, it was. I was even excited about coming out of the tunnel and uh, at 125th Street, you know, and and uh, uh, looking at the familiar uh, uh, streets and uh, people hanging out the windows mm -hmm. on the sure. side, you know. I I even enjoy all that, really. How do you enjoy watching yourself on TV when the old motion pictures are shown? Do you? Uh, what is your reaction? Well, it all depends. If the children are there, I kind of <laughs> run out of the room because I hear, "Oh mother, oh mother, That's not oh true. no, That's not true. oh mother," and <laughs> they see it once. And if it's on again, I'll say, "You know, they're showing that picture that I was in." Oh goody, you know. <laughs> but they don't watch it. <laughs> So it's uh, well. Let's say you're alone. Well, how do you feel when you see a picture and, and you don't have oh, any distractions? I I I love watching them. I I it um, I kind of relive the whole thing, you know, of how we did it and what was going on at the time, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course the stories that were, as you know, very uh, strong dramatic stories. <laughs> <laughs> I I just like looking at the people. And going back and 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 uh, saying, oh gosh, there's so and so, and oh gosh, you know, there's so and so, and then I will uh, probably <laughs> tell the kids something that happened, you know, at that time when we were doing this, when we were making that picture. You should have seen this, and of course they couldn't care less. Well, those movies were usually heavily promoted prior to their release, especially on radio. Ed, do you happen to have a Ruby Keeler movie promo in your collection? Yeah, this is a very rare show, but I, I do have a uh, copy. Is this another one with Dick Powell? Yeah, why don't we listen to it and then maybe you comment on it, Dick, uh, which, uh, whether you remember this at all. Adventure and Romance, as we present a direct from Hollywood radio preview of the hit picture of the month, Shipmates Forever. It is a cosmopolitan picture presented by Warner Brothers, featuring Dick Powell, Ruby Keeler, Louis Stone, Ross Alexander, Dick Foran, Johnny Olich, and the entire midshipman corps of the United States Naval Academy at Annapolis. The first scene of our preview of Shipmates Forever takes us to the Sky Club, one of New York's popular night spots, where we meet Dick Melville Jr., only son of Admiral Melville of the United States Navy. Against the wishes of his father, Dick has become a famous radio entertainer and is the star of the nightclub show. Young Melville is played by none other than our old friend, the Broadway gondolier himself, Dick Powell. As we enter the Sky Club, Dick steps up to the microphone to start the evening show. Good evening, everybody. This is Dick Melville speaking. Tonight is Welcome Navy Night here at the Sky Club. I've written a new song that I want to dedicate to the Navy and to Admiral Richard Melville, the boss of the fleet. Don't give up the ship. <laughs> With the fleet under his father's command, arriving in New York Harbor, Dick Melville joins the throngs lining the Hudson to watch the thrilling review. There he strikes up an acquaintance with a charming young miss who turns out to be June Blackburn, niece of a Navy captain stationed at Annapolis. Here's the scene from Shipmates Forever with lovable Ruby Keeler playing June. Did you live in Annapolis? Well, I was there with my dad. Wherever he was stationed, I was stuck there, too. Then you're Navy. No, but my dad is. His father before him, his father before him. You don't look like a Melville. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. I suppose it's because I just couldn't picture a Melville without a uniform. Whoa, there. You sound like my dad when he opens up his family broadsides on me. I hear that so often. Are you a Navy girl? I was a Navy girl. My father was Captain Blackburn. No wonder you think I should be wearing a uniform. No, I don't. 
I'd never marry a Navy man. That's the best news I've heard today. Does that make me eligible? You want to be? No picture starring Ruby Keeler and Dick Powell would be complete without Miss Keeler's inimitable dance specialties. Her stepping in Shipmates Forever is one of the big attractions of the film. We're going to let Ruby's twinkling feet speak for themselves as she does a military tap dance. <laughs> Hollywood's most successful team of songwriters, Al Dubin and Harry Warren, have written three new numbers for Shipmates Forever. And that concludes our radio preview of Warner Brothers' newest musical hit, Shipmates Forever, starring Dick Powell and Ruby Keeler. The picture was directed by Frank Wazake, with many scenes actually filmed at the Naval Academy in Annapolis. The Vitaphone Orchestra was conducted by Leo Falkstein. This is Bill Ray announcing. Oh, that was great. Well, I really don't remember the movie, Ed. It was a little before my time. But these old films never seem to lose their charm. Yeah, they never do. That's right. Shall we get back to the interview I did with Ruby Keeler? Very good, Dick. Well, I was anxious to learn how she got her first break in films. I was just lucky. <laughs> I really was. Uh, in, in my time, you must remember that uh, uh, the, the start of musicals, and uh, I... Uh, had been in shows, and I was a dancer, and I was uh, young, and uh, uh, when they, uh, I, the very first thing I did, they were going to uh, um, make a test, or they were going to do a test of, of uh, taps for sound. Anyway, I was in the show, and they asked me if I would make the test. And, uh, which I did, and that was that. And then they used that as a short before a, a, a big picture, which was um, uh, kind of a compliment to me and also uh, an exposure, really, because mm -hmm. they used this when um, uh, Lilac Time opened in uh, um, California, one of the big uh, openings, you know. And they used this before the picture, this short, because I don't think that they had, had gotten to the um, tap dancing, you know, or they'd gotten to the singing and the speaking, but I mean to actually record the taps. And I don't know how they do it today. When I did uh, start in pictures, we pre-recorded everything. You see, and I guess they do that today. I don't know. They still do. Do as they? Matter of fact, yes. So you, you, you danced and made a recording yes, and then danced test. for the camera. Yes. This mm -hmm. was a test that they were making, not of me particularly, but for the uh, uh, taps and the, and, and the uh, 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 photographing it at the same time. And, uh, and I was the one they selected. They were not making a test of, say, Ruby Keeler. It was just for, for the studio. Mm -hmm. But this acted as a... But Beautiful it, showcase for yes, you. Yes, it did. Yeah. Is this what led to 42nd Street? Well, I, I don't know. I guess so. Because uh, then I was asked to make a test for, I think it was United Artists, and, uh, which I did. Uh, uh, and I didn't uh, hear anything. And the first thing I know, I was called to Warner Brothers because Warner Brothers had heard that I'd made the test at United Artists. Or I'll say United Artists, I forget. And uh, uh, they sent for the test. And they were going to do this musical, you see, 42nd Street. And uh, so they signed me. Mm -hmm. And that, that was it. Had 
you ever worked with Dick Powell before? And no. Never met him? No. No. No, I hadn't. I didn't know anybody. And what were some of the uh, uh, unusual experiences that you might have had with that first picture? Well, I was scared to death, and, and uh, you know, it, when you work in nightclubs or you work in the theater, you know right now what you have done. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if they like you or if they don't like you. And uh, uh, Lloyd Bacon was the director, and I had just met him, and of course I was really awed by all this. And uh, I can remember following this man around uh, and asking him about the rushes the day before, you know, they show rushes. And he just kind of looked down at me, you know, and said, oh, all right, you know, they're all right. And so I never knew. I never knew what they were saying about me or, <laughs> or anything else. And it's, uh, it's quite uh, a little frustrating and uh, a little um, uh, depressing because you don't know how you're doing. I mean, if you've done something that is, you think, uh, is working out well, someone would usually say, that was all right, you know, but this way you don't even get that. Mm -hmm. So you don't know if you're doing well or not. When did you see the completed picture? When it opened. That was the first <laughs> time. <laughs> About uh, six months or later, you know, uh -huh. something like that. And how did you feel about it when you saw it? Gosh, I don't remember. Yeah. But it must have been an experience for you, nevertheless, to see oh, it heavens. completed. Yeah. Of course it was. It was, a, it was a, just a big thrill. In the heart of little old New York, you'll find a thoroughfare. It's the part of little old New York that runs in two times square. A crazy quilt that Wall Street Jack built. If you've got a little time to spare, I'd like to take you there. Come and meet those dancing feet On the avenue I'm taking you to 42nd Street Here's a beat of dancing feet It's the song I love, the melody of 42nd Street Little nifties from the 50s, innocent and sweet Sexy ladies from the 80s who are indiscreet Oh, the side by side, they're glorified Where the underworld can be the elite, 42nd Street seven-year span or so that uh, your name was uh, really one of the top names in Hollywood. What uh, do you think was your favorite picture? Well, they were all very much alike, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. as far as dialogue, the, the, uh, the um, uh, numbers were different. 
However, Flirtation Walk and Shipmates Forever were a little uh, different. But the musicals were usually the same of the little girl, you know, comes in and takes the place of the star and there was always some somebody backing the show and always the young boy. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. I really did. Actually, I every I, minute of it. It reflects on the 30s too, in a mm-hmm. in a great sense. The idea of the uh, of the little girl coming in. Yeah. We were in the midst of a depression, and this was a great escape yeah, for millions I of guess, people guess, yeah. to uh, to to you know get away from their own uh, uh, situation and for two and a half or three hours just right. to relax and see somebody that. else make it. You and know. I do think I must say that uh, even today, I think Busby Berkeley, the man who did the numbers. Uh, well, is, he must be a genius because the numbers today, I don't think any anybody's come along to touch this man. And this is going back 30 years or more. And uh, the the effects that, uh, of course, he worked with the cameraman all the time, you know, and, and the effects that, that uh, uh, they got with their dolly shots clear. I mean, it was all new. And you must also remember that uh, that long ago, these dollies were moved by men, you know, mm-hmm. and, and if if uh, there's a camera down here coming slowly up to the top of the stage, this has to be done just s- as smooth as can be, and if there's a little jerk at all, zoom, it, it's cut, you know, even the take back, you know. So it was really hard work, and we worked long hours. We really did, and we worked day and night. I can imagine you did. And actually, those numbers, as you say, were staged for film and, and beautifully utilized. And, yeah. and today, they're marvelous. Yeah. They're marvelous yeah. today. Yeah. He really, uh, this man was just terrific, I think. I didn't realize it at the time, but now I do. I mean, when you can uh, uh, sit at home in, in, in 1965 and, and see something that was made 30 or 33 years ago or something or 35 years ago, and and enjoy it, mm-hmm. and uh, and and just say well, uh, or, or think of the the wonderful formations of these girls and the 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 wonderful um, camera work. It's just I, I think it's uh, they're wonderful. Ruby Keeler is charming, isn't she, Ed? Well, that's certainly the right word, Dick. Charming, very lovely. In 1928, she met Al Jolson, the most famous entertainer in the world at that time. He was 46 and she was just 18, and he swept her off her feet. They were married that same year. Ed, do you have an example of Jolson and Ruby Keeler together? I'd love to hear it. Yes, I think I have one, Dick, that goes back to about that era. I haven't heard it myself in some time, so I'm looking forward to it, uh, to hearing it again also. Hollywood, California, Monday, June 15th. <laughs> Radio Theater, from its new home on Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood, California, brings you Al Jolson and Ruby Keeler in burlesque. <laughs> Lux presents Hollywood. Tonight, you will meet such great personalities as Al Jolson, Ruby Keeler, Cecil B. DeMille, Daniel Froman, George Barnes, and many others. This entertainment is presented by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. As producer of the Lux Radio Theater tonight, and each Monday from now on, we welcome back a man who has made 62 of America's great motion pictures and has started more great stars on their careers than any other producer in Hollywood, Mr. Cecil B. Bill. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Less than a decade ago, the movies were voiceless. Stars as celebrated as Wallace Reed, Rudolph Valentino, Theda Barra, Lillian Gish, and Francis X. Bushman had millions of admirers. We spoke of our business as the silver screen, but its silence was golden for many an actor and director. Then a man came along who had been billed on Broadway as the greatest entertainer in the world. With his first film, The Jazz Singer, he not only made pictures talk, he made them sing. Then he made another picture called The Singing Fool, and then he fell in love. She was a charming little Irish girl. 
In three months, they were married. Their marriage is one. Their marriage is one of which Hollywood is most proud. They have each scored separately in the theater, on the screen, and over radio. But we present them tonight for their first appearance together on the air. <laughs> In lights above the entrance of the Lux Radio Theater is a glittering legend. And excited crowds along Hollywood Boulevard tonight read the words, Al Jolson and Ruby Keeler in Burlesque. <laughs> and now, for the first act of Burlesque, in which you'll hear Al Jolson as Skid Brown and Ruby Keeler as Bonnie Smith. We are backstage at a burlesque show, playing a small town in the Middle West, and Lefty Moore, the stage manager, is standing in the wings, hurrying the chorus girls onto the stage. All right, Joe, kill the house lights. Okay, flash the orchestra. Oh, Lefty. Oh, yeah, uh, what do you want, Bob? Has Skid come in yet? No, no, not a sign-up. I've been in all of his hangouts, but I can't find him. Did you try the pool room? I just sent Jimmy. A nice spot Skid's put me in. The show started and my cheap comic ain't here. I ought to kill that bird. Ah, uh, he'll turn up, Lefty. I've been working with Skid for almost four years now, and I never knew him to miss a cue. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's coming so close to missing him that's turning my hair gray. You know... You want to do something about that guy, Bonnie? What? Well, it ain't none of my business, but why don't you marry him and have it over with? What are you stalling him for? He'd settle down if he was married to you. You think so? Why, sure, sure. Skid's nuts about you. He'd do anything you tell him. Oh, I don't know. We're supposed to be engaged, but he don't listen to me much now. How do I know it'll be any different later? Hiya, folks. Well, if it ain't the wondering boy himself. Hiya, Lefty. Hiya, Bunny. So, uh, you decided to come, huh? Sure, never keep the public waiting. That's my motto. Well, now, that's nice of you. Go on, get in your clothes, will you? You're on in five minutes. Okay, Lefty. Well, Bunny, how's the kid? All right, I guess. Nice time to be showing up. What's the matter? You ain't sore at me, are you? Would it do any good? <laughs> I a baby. Come on, you'll be late. You gotta change your clothes. Well, you know me, scared the fire and the child. I can dress sliding down a pole. Where have you been? Who, me? I've been playing pool. I suppose you couldn't make a shot thinking of me eating all alone. I told you after the napping I wasn't hungry, didn't I? Just thirsty, huh? No, and I wasn't thirsty neither. I just went out to get a little air. Oh, some nice pool room air. Ah, cut it out, will you, Bunny? Did you have anything to eat? Yeah, I had a couple of hot dogs. Well, that's fine, that is. How do you expect to be funny on hot dogs? I'm going to send Jimmy out at intermission for some soup. <laughs> but I don't want no soup. You'll eat it and like it. All right, all right, I'll eat it and like it. Get will you get it and you make up. Come in, Lefty. See you later, Bonnie. Okay. Come to me, my melancholy baby. Cuddle up and don't be blue. Hiya, Maisie. Well, I want to see the boyfriend got in all right. Yeah. That day Marco was looking for him just before she went on. Again? Yeah. Why don't you take a poke at her? Oh, she's not worth it. What do you want to see Skid about? To say goodbye, I guess. Goodbye? Is she gone someplace? Please don't tell me you ain't heard. Heard what? Marco's leaving the show tonight. Gone with a Manhattan Folly. Oh, Broadway, huh? Well, that's a nice break. Yeah, I could kill her. Well, there's one consolation for me. She won't be around Skid anymore. All right, girls, all right, now make your change. Now hurry up, please. Oh, yeah, Come I'm on. Hurrying. Hey, where's my coat from, Bay? I'm very proud of her walking out on me like Look this. Look at her coming off the stage, putting on the dog already. Hello, Miss Marco. Did you hear my number? No, I was spared that. Oh, you're not jealous, are you, Maisie? Why, you slink-eyed pony, I'll slide up against the door. Cut it up, Maisie. 
No fighting, do you hear? Oh, I wouldn't hit her. I just want to hear a yelp. Hey, what's going on here? Nothing, Bozo. Maisie starting to scrap again? Of course not, Bozo. It's just a friendly argument. It sounded like the Battle of the Marne. Where's Skid Bonnie? Did he get in yet? Uh-huh, he's downstairs putting on the putty nose. Yeah, that's a break. I was afraid I was going to have to play his part, too. Say, Bonnie, your cattle king is out front again. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's a boy, he is. This is the sixth time he's been in to see the show. He fell hard for you, Bonnie. He's the only following I ever had. Hey, where did she go? Oh. Marco, she was standing here a second ago. Yeah, until she heard where Skid was. Probably downstairs by now, gurgling her fond farewell. You decent, Skid? Come in, Marco. I'm just putting on my makeup. Go right ahead. How's the house, Marco? Oh, a little cool. Oh, they'll warm up. Where do you like it up there and take a few falls from? The only was always like to see a guy fall flat on his pants. Funny, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, Skid. What? You coming to see me off tonight? Say, hey, that's right. You're leaving, ain't you? Well? Gosh, I don't know, Marco. I'd like to go down to see you off, but I got a date with Bonnie after the show. Oh, Bonnie. Skid, why don't you get wise to yourself? What do you mean? That kid's no good for you. Well, you've been teamed up with her for four years, and where's it got you? No place. Well, she's holding you back, and you don't know it. Holding me back? Oh, say, don't you believe it, Marco. Bonnie's okay. Why, anything I am, I owe to her. And listen, when she says words, we're going to get hitched. Oh, yes? Your funeral, Skid. Ah, now, you're all wrong, Marco. Bonnie's the best thing that ever happened to me. Holy mackerel, that's me cue. So long, Marco. Try to see you after the show. Hurry up, Skip. Come on, hurry up, will you? You're on. Okay, baby, I'll panic him. What the hell I take on the effort? <laughs> Holy cats, that guy will kill himself taking those falls. Come in, Maisie. Telegram just came for Skid. Telegram? Yeah, I thought maybe you'd want to take care of it. Hand it over, Maisie. I'll get it to him later. Hmm. Wonder who's broke now. <laughs> maybe somebody's cashed in or an accident. No. Telegrams for Skid are only touches. But that one's heavy. It feels important. They're always important to the guy that sends them. <laughs> oh, gee, how Skid takes those balls. I'm glad that was his last one. He'll be coming down in a minute. A couple more like that, and he'll come down through the ceiling. Oh, say, did you hear about Marco? Something else? Yeah, she ain't singing her last number tonight. Get in the earlier train. Why? Don't ask me. Say, I better scram. I'm due for the baby number. Oh, hi, Skid. Hiya, Maisie. Excuse me. Where you? I'm on a minute. Sure. Skid, come in here a second. Well, honey, did you hear me panic them? Yeah, and I heard the falls, too. Listen, I tell it. What are you limping for? Oh, me? I ain't limping. You hurt yourself, didn't you? No. You did. Oh, Skid, when are you going to cut it out? Cut what out? Taking those falls. They're in my routine, ain't they? That doesn't mean you have to break your back, does it? Oh, uh, Bonnie, you got to make up your mind to one thing. I'm a whole comic. Don't waste no time trying to clean me up, because I'd be a flop. Say, when I was a baby, the first thing I reached for was a custard pie. What's the use of kidding all your life? Ain't you never going to be serious? Don't you want to get ahead in this game? What do you mean, get ahead? We're working all the time, ain't we? I ain't hanging around Broadway making touches, am I? What do you mean, get ahead? I'm talking about you getting where you belong. Broadway! Boy, if I had your talent. Say, how do you know I'd be so good? I could be a big flop, too, in a real show. There's a tip-off. You're scared. Say, how many times you going to pull that one out? How many times you going to make me? Come in. Howdy, folks. Mm -hmm. Come on, Lefty. This fight ain't private. I'm glad to hear it. What's the fuss? Ah, oh, Bonnie's riding me because I ain't got no ambition. Yeah, and I'll leave it to you, Lefty. Ain't he a stop for sticking in burlesque? Shouldn't he be framing new stuff that'll get him somewhere? Yeah. Shouldn't I be George White and have me only show and sit in a box office? I can't get steamed up over this Broadway stuff. You're a hit on Broadway, so what? What does it get you? It gets you a lot of jack to begin with. But Bonnie's right, kid. It's time you were stepping out. For instance? Well, for instance, uh, Earl Carroll had a scout out to St. Paul to see you last week. Earl Carroll? Well, yeah, sure. He came back after the show and asked me all about you, Skid. Hey, didn't you hear from him? Nah, I ain't heard a tumble. Well, I guess you ain't. Oh, you'd have told me. 
But you'll hear from them. And when you do, grab it, kid. Wait a minute. What's the matter? The telegram. What telegram? It came for you. Here, open it, open it. All right, take it easy. It's probably just another touch that'll set me back about 50 bucks. I remember one time... Well, what is it? Holy mackerel, listen. What? Have a chance to place you in Manhattan Follies opening next week. Stop. Is there any way you can get out of your present engagement? Stop. Can get you $500 a week or maybe more. Stop. Leave salary to me. Stop. Great chance. No comedy in short present. You'll have to be here by Sunday for rehearsal. Why, Max Levy. Max Levy, the big agent? Well, I'll be... Well, there you are, Skip. <laughs> Somebody's kidding me, I guess. Somebody's kidding me, you mean. That's right. Say they didn't mention Buddy Lefty. What's the idea? I guess I can answer that. I know all the answers. What's the matter, honey? Don't you dare call me honey. Hey, what are you boring me out for? Get out, will you, Lefty? Huh? I want to speak to this guy alone. Okay. Hey, what's the idea of all this temperamental stuff, Barn? If the telegram ain't a fake, it's a chance you've been raving about, ain't it's it? It's your chance, all right. Your chance to be in the same show with that little hypocrite you went nuts about was in the hospital in day morning. Who, who? You know darn well who. Oh, you mean Marco. Yes, Marco, Marco, Marco. That's who I mean. Why, you're crazy. Why, this hell... What's this telegram got to do with Marco? As though you didn't know. What show is Marco joining? Why, she's... She's... That's right. It's the same show, ain't it? That's a coincidence. Yeah, it's more than that. It's a... Conspiracy. What do you mean by that crack? I mean the whole thing's a frame-up between you and Marco. The two of you beating it together and neither one of you had the nerve to come clean. Oh, this telegram was a surprise to me. You're crazy to think that. Yeah, a pleasant surprise. Holy mackerel, will you take a tumble to yourself? It's a joke for you to be so jealous of that kid. Jealous? How of what? A bum comedian who ain't got a laugh above his hips? Say, if you was to fall for a girl that meant anything, I'd wish you luck. But that empty-headed little brat... I ain't jealous, I'm insulted. Well, you can stop blowing up steam and cool off, because why? Because I ain't going. Who said you wasn't going? I said it, and that settles it. Oh, it does. Since when does what you say settle things? Well, it settles this one. Oh, come on, Bunny, let's forget it, will you? We'll stick together, kid, and as soon as you say the word, we'll take a walk over to the license bureau. What do you say? That's us, I guess. Especially, Bunny. I know. Well? Skid... I'm sorry for what I said. I didn't mean it. Sure. Kiss me, Skid. Oh, honey, gee whiz, I... Hold me tight. Tight, Skid. It'll be a long time before we see each other again. But I ain't going, Bunny. Oh, yes, you are. This is your big chance, Skid. You're not going to pass it up for me or anyone else. But, Bunny... Will you two love us get up here? Come on, Skid. Okay. Well, it's about time. Come on, come on. Will you get out there and do your stuff? Okay, let's be all set, buddy. I'll be seeing you out there. Watch the last. I get on there. Hey, Bunny. 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 H
should have been out front tonight. Gee, Bonnie, you are swell. Never mind that now. Well, Lefty? It's all fixed. Skid, you're fired. Huh? Ten. What for? You're going to New York. I got two guys packing your bags, and I just phoned for a reservation. But wait a minute. I told Bonnie that now, I wasn't... Now, I'm running this partnership. You're leaving for New York, and you're leaving tonight. <laughs> So long, darling. You're right, won't you? Sure. Every day, Bunny. I'll be awful lonesome without you. Gee, I'll be an awful sap without you, kid. We ain't never been apart before. As soon as the season's over, dear, I'll come right on. Maybe I'll be a flop and I can come back soon. You can't come back. You're fired. <laughs> I didn't think of that. That ain't so good. Just forget it. It's sink or swim now. I don't like the way you said sink. Well, how do you like the way I say swim? Well, I, I guess that's me. Gee, I don't know how to say goodbye, baby. I ain't never said goodbye to you. Just, just kiss me, Skid. Oh, oh, gosh, honey. Oh, I'll miss you, Skid. I love you, Skid. Oh, gosh, I'll well, miss you. I'm lost already without you, Bunny. So long, darling. I'll wire and I'll write. Every day, Skid. Every day. Goodbye, Bunny. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye Skid. Goodbye. We return now to Burlesque, the story of Skid Brown, played by Al Jolson, and Bonnie Smith, played by Ruby Keeler. Several months have passed since Skid left to join the Manhattan Follies. Bonnie is still on tour with the Burlesque Company. In her room in a small town hotel, she lies huddled on the bed, reading the morning paper. Her friend Maisie enters. Morning, dearie. Up kind of early, ain't you? Yeah, a little. What's the idea? I couldn't sleep. Oh. Any word from Skid yet? Not a line. You know, I'd like to brain that guy. How long is it now since he wrote to you? Oh, I don't know. About six weeks, I guess. Just a big Broadway man. <coughs> Boy, success must have hit him right between the eyes. No, Maisie. Skid ain't the kind who get a, gets a swelled head. It's, it's something else this time. The thing I was afraid of. Marco? Yeah. Mm. I've been kind of following them in the Broadway gossip columns. Here, get a load of this. Mm, let's see. Oh, yeah. Skid Brown, who wows them each night at the Manhattan Follies, is a wow to Sylvia Marco of the same show. They may be seen together every p.m. doing the hot spots along the main stem. Well, that's that. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? What do you mean? You're still in love with the guy, ain't you? Sure. I guess I'll always be in love with him. But if Skid don't want me, well, I ain't the clinging vine type. Oh, but listen, Bonnie. Excuse me, will you? Uh-huh. Hello? Oh, hello, Harvey. Pretty good. When? Well, all right, Harvey. Pick me up about 11.30. Bye. Who was that? Remember the fellow we used to kid about? The one we called the Cattling King? Yeah, sure. He used to sit in the front row every night. Well, that was him. Harvey Howell. He's a swell guy, Maisie, and a real guy. He wants to marry me. Has he got any dough? I guess so. He owns a couple of ranches. A couple of ranches? Sure. He's taking me out after the show tonight. I promised him I'd give him my answer then. the dance money? Thanks, Harvey, but do you mind if I don't? I'm a little tired tonight. That's all right. Pretty near time to be leaving anyway. Yeah. Bonnie, did you think over what I asked you about getting married? I've been thinking about it, sure. Well? Harvey, I don't know how to say this, but do you mind waiting a little longer? Yeah, I'm not in any rush. It ain't that I'm trying to stall or anything, but the show's moving back east, Harvey, and I want to see Skid. Just once more. Okay, Bonnie. You understand, don't you? Hello, box office, Manhattan Follies. I'm sorry, we're all sold out for tonight. Eight weeks in advance. Okay. 
Hello there, Mr. Kent. Oh, hello, Skid. What are you doing, counting up the shekels? Yeah. They tell me you want to see me, Mr. Kent. I do. Sit down, won't you, Skid? What's on your mind? You, Skid. Skid, I'm going to tell you something straight from the shoulder. Yeah. I've been managing Broadway shows for a long time, so you can take it from me. I know what I'm talking about. Skid, you got to cut out your drinking. Oh, me? Don't give me that. You went on that stage last night, so lit up, you couldn't even see. Those falls you were taking were on the level. They got laughs, didn't they? Sure they did. But that isn't the point. Skid, you've got this whole business right in your lap. You can sing, you can dance, you can make them laugh. You're a big hit. But take it from an old-timer, Skid. Drinking and show business don't mix. That's all. But, Mr. Kent... That's all, Skid. Oh, Skid. Skid. Hello, Marco. Been in to see Kent? Yeah. What'd he say? Nothing much. Hmm, so you won't talk, huh? All right. What are you doing after the show tonight? I don't know. I kind of figured I'd get a little sleep for a change. Oh, come on with us. We're getting up a party to go to the hot spot. Oh, count me out, Marco. I want to stay home and write a couple of letters. Oh, I see. Who to? Well, Bonnie, for one. I ain't written to her. Honestly, I wouldn't blame her if she was sore as a boy like me. Listen, are you still thinking of that kid? Sure, why not? I thought that was over long ago. I know. Well, it ought to be. What are you going to do after she's married? Still write mash notes to her? After she's... What are you talking about? She's going to be married to some rancher guy. Who said so? I got it from one of the in the troop. She wrote me all about it. Married? Oh, there must be some mistake or something. It's all set. Holy gee. Why didn't she tell me? Why didn't she let me know? Oh, brace up, Skid. The world hasn't come to an end. Why worry over a cheap little burlap? Shut up, Marco. What? I said shut up. Whoa. One moment, please. Hello? Hotel Carlton. Go ahead. Hotel Carlton. Hello, operator. This is room 707. Did you get that number? Oh, thank you. Hello? Hello, Winter Garden? I'd like to speak to Skid Brown, please. Yes, I'll hold the wire. Is he there, Bonnie? They're going to look. I hope they don't find him. I can't understand why you... Hello? Want... Skid? This is Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie. Where am I? Oh, why, in New York, of course. Got in yesterday. Yes? I caught the show last night, Skid. You, uh, you were all right. I'm at the Carlton. You want to come over after the show tonight? All right. I'll see you then. Bye. He's coming, huh? Yeah. What's Harvey going to say? Harvey knows about it. He's coming, too. Hmm, it's going to be a nice party. I can see that. <laughs> How'd I do, honey? Oh, Skid, you were swell. I knew you'd be. How you feeling? Oh, I'm all right. Do you... Do you think you can go on being all right? I can, Bonnie. If you stick by me. Sure, Skid. I'll stick. For good? For good. Oh, gee, Bonnie. But what about... A cattle rancher. Oh, it's all right. I explained it to him, Skid. You see, well, I had an idea I was coming here to stay. Oh, Bunny, I'm crazy about you. I can't get along without you, sweetheart. You won't even have to try. From now on, it's you and me together. For better or for worse. Yeah, better for me and worse for you. Ah, there you go. Always clowning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Jolsons. <laughs> Al and Ruby, you have enjoyed wealth, fame, and success. All the things most people dream about. Ah, but that's nothing, Mr. Mill, compared to the thrill I got when little Al Jr. spoke his first word. And what do you think was the first word he ever said? He said, Daddy. Ah, uh, no, Al. He said, Mama. Did he? Well, didn't he? If you say so, I guess he did. <laughs> but, oh, that kid. Good, solid arms and back. Is he a husky? What a baby. Honestly, Mr. DeMille, I don't like to exaggerate, but you've never seen ten such wiggly little toes. Hmm. Takes after his mother, doesn't he? Those twinkling toes of rubies. The makers of Lux Toilet Soap wish to express their appreciation to our capable cast, Wally Mayer, Victor Rodman, Eddie Kane, Rita Leroy, Inez Seabury, Frank Nelson, and Lou Merrill. 
And now, here is your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Next week, our play is The Dark Angel. A vital romance played against a background of war. A dramatic triumph on the, on the Broadway stage and twice successful on the screen. This unforgettable drama will be presented on the air by the same stars who thrilled us in its most recent movie version. Merle Oberon and Herbert Marshall. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Al Jolson and Ruby Keeler, husband and wife, in an excerpt from the Lux Radio Theater production of Burlesque, dating back to 1936. Shall we get back to the interview? Sounds good, Dick. Do you miss I mean, it? Do you miss films? No, I've been out too too long. I play golf now. Do you? Mm -hmm. What about television? Now, you, you did television not too long ago. You were on the Jerry Lewis show. That's right. Every once in a while, someone will get a brainstorm and, and uh, call and ask me if I'd like to do something. They forget, you know, that I'm uh, getting older and they uh, uh, expect me to go right in and dance. But I did. Uh, they had called and asked me and I thought about it and I said, sure, I'll do this. How long did you rehearse the show? Uh, about um, two weeks, mm -hmm. two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. If that, really, with mm -hmm. the boys. I don't think it was that long. Was that a live show or was it pre -tank? It was a live show. Did you get much uh, reaction from fans of yes. today and yesterday? Let's as say. a matter of fact, strange as it may seem, I, I still get fan mail. Did you find that perhaps your fan mail began to increase when you found yourself appearing on television through these early oh. films? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, very much yeah. so. so. What do you think about movies today? Uh, I'll have to confess that I haven't seen a movie. <laughs> I don't... Well, I did see a color film, and that was coming out on TWA. That, I haven't seen anything. Did you have much of a, of a life to yourself during those years out in Hollywood, or did you find no. that uh, it was rather difficult? Not difficult, but um, nothing to, my way of thinking, to look forward to. Mm -hmm. To me, there's there's so much more to life than just uh, being able to buy a big car and being able to take a trip whenever you want it. I mean, it's... Uh, I, I, I don't think that this is um, too much fun. I think you enjoy things more when you have to think about them a little bit. And I think that a lot of people... Uh, Try to get this when they they are when they can have everything that they want. Try to they feel the same, but but uh, it's it only lasts a short while, you know. I mean, just think if you could walk down the street and buy anything that you wanted, sure you'd love it for 24 hours or 48 hours, but then that's over. Where do you go? What have you done, let's say, since the early 40s to fulfill your life? Well, I have five children. Uh huh. And. Uh, that really uh, takes uh, quite a bit <laughs> of your time. Uh, they are my life, my husband and my children, my life, and I loved it. I loved um, my children. Fortunately, were all um, athletes. They all played ball. They all uh, uh, baseball, basketball. They were always on the teams, and they were uh, competitive. And uh, I was always right there to watch the games, mm -hmm. you know, and to yell and scream. And so it's really been. Uh, uh, wonderful for me. Well, I certainly want to thank you very much, Miss Ruby Keeler, for visiting with us. Thank you for having us. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Well, Ed, what was your impression of Ruby Keeler? I'm really at a loss for words. Well, it was an absolute thrill for me to meet her after hearing her on radio and seeing her dance on the silver screen so many years ago. I tell you what, Ed, let's get a couple of tickets and catch her in No No Nanette on Broadway. Let's do that, Dick. My thanks to Ron Ward of San Antonio, Texas, and Dick Judge of Rochester, New York, for sharing their collection of Ruby Keeler radio memorabilia with us. And now, until next time, this is Dick Bertell. This is Ed Corcoran. Good night. The Golden Age of Radio with Dick Bertell was produced and edited by Bob Sherego. This is Bill Hansen speaking. Pepper Young Family. The story of your friends, the Youngs, is brought to you by Cam A. 
the mild beauty soap for a smoother, softer complexion. Rinse so white and rinse so bright. Broadcasting from New York City, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Bill Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day.